Hi. Ooh. We're live. I think I always start saying we're live, which obviously you know because you can see me, so I should probably stop saying that. But um, we're here, we, me. I'm here with my friend Andrew T. He's a writer for Mixed Dish. He's the host of a podcast called Yo, Is This Racist? Which is how I first encountered Andrew because I thought he was a black person on Tumblr and then discovered he wasn't. Um, but yeah. Andrew, thanks for <laughs> being here to chat. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. This is exciting. Yeah. This is exciting. Also, I think I called you a curmudgeon in my email, which, like, as the in my favorite Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you're the most fair. I, I definitely have been more... Well, the, the lectern thing really brought out the worst in Andrew. Like, the worst Andrew is language prescriptivist Andrew. And... <laughs> I'm normally I'm normally okay with it, but for some reason, podium, uh, podium is the one that like fucking gets me. Um, yeah, it's just never it's just never a podium. I mean, now it is. It doesn't matter. Language changes, but that's the one. Yeah. So I've been I've been uh yeah just a real real grump. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that that is kind of my vibe. I'm like I'm like pretty pessimistic or always disappointed in people. So or everything. So yeah, that's that's what i've been throwing out there that's fair let's start then so we're talking about interior yeah. China. did you have a pessimistic reaction to this book Whoa, you set me up <laughs> uh yeah 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 i i um one of my worst traits is probably how much i um how hard i am on um both Asian shit and shit that has been labeled by white people as this is the Asian American experience. Yes. And this book was that in spades. <laughs> uh, in fact, that's probably all I knew about it. If I'm being yeah. honest, before I start, before um, you suggested that I, uh, that we do the show, I, I, it was like on my list of things to read, but also I had made uh, in, in quarantine looking at my bookshelf this year. And I was like, I'm not reading a single book by man because my bookshelf is like mm. messed up. Like, like even if I, even if I didn't read a single book by a man for, uh, I think probably a decade, it would not be equal. And so I was like, well, <laughs> sorry, sorry, interior Chinatown, you're out. But um, no, I'm glad I read it. Um, and I uh, will say that it took me, however many pages my copy is, uh, about about 250 or so. Um, mm -hmm. It took me probably like 150 pages to get on board. I oh. was really, Did you really know like... Going in, like you just knew it was this mm -hmm. sort of claimed Asian novel. Yeah, I, I think I literally, all I knew was it won um, the, what is it, National Book Award, something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah National Book Award. And that all the blurbs were like, this is Asian, yeah. Asian American experience. <laughs> and I think, I, I truly think that's it. I don't think I knew. I, I mean, I maybe, I was right on the line of being able to guess that it was even like a Hollywood related book because of the right. interior. But I, that was like, there are other reasons it could be called that. So, you know, I, I, I went in like extremely cold, extremely cold. Um, in, I think, a good way. Because there's probably a world where if I'd known a little bit more about it, I would have bailed around page 50. Yeah, I think if I had told you this is a satirical novel about Hollywood and, like, the Asian experience in America and representation, I think you would have, mm -hmm. like, fled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think it would have been, like, not my thing. Or, or I would have done this show, but I think I would have gone in um hard on it like just Wait, mentally somebody, somebody said in the comments that they had to read it twice to absorb it which i think is like interesting and correct i think also because of like the format of this book like mm -hmm. you know i are screenwriters and like are and you know like we read scripts and like i think even mm -hmm. if you haven't read a script like the interior thing doesn't necessarily make sense and seeing like you know, the mm -hmm. action that's really long, like understanding sort of like what he's playing with. I absolutely could see how that's 
that might not have been like super clear if you just went into this kind of blind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's th there's there's formatting uh, sort of issues to get around, um, and it matters. That I didn't catch until yesterday that the formatting like really really mattered. Um, <laughs> Uh, in a way that I was like, oh, okay. And, and I, I mean, I'll be honest, I did not give it a deep read um, the first time. And then yesterday in kind of doing a reskim in really looking for some, like something coherent to say, because I really, I was pretty confident until I like picked up the book <laughs> yesterday afternoon. I was like, I should just, I should just like flip through it. Cause you know, I, I like read it, you know, like a couple weeks ago. So I was like, yeah. I should, you know, whatever. And then I was like, oh shit, I missed significant things. Um, with, I mean, with like what's happening here. Sort of maybe not contrastly, but differently. Like I loved this book, like from when I started it, like I felt like I was like, I get what he's trying to do off mm -hmm. the bat. I was like, I get this, I get this, like the generic Asian man thing. I was just like super on board with it. And then for me, especially like the ending, which like we can get to, but like that sort of corporate mm -hmm. I think what I also really responded to with this book was like, you know, like I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. So like I'm, I've been around Asian people a lot and like all types of Asian people, like in terms of nationality, just in terms of like mm -hmm. vibe, like, like a spectrum of people. So like one, I was just like, oh, this is, um, I was just sort of like happy to see that. But I think what I also mm -hmm. loved was like this sort of intra-racial conversation that like, mm -hmm like we have but that mm -hmm. like you know a white person is not usually around for that conversation like sometimes for good reason like i i think there are a lot of conversations that i like i will say like we shouldn't be having this in mixed company like it should be us right. you know right, like, right, right. i like don't want them to hear but i thought that was something that i appreciate about this book was like it was sort of just in conversation with like both white America and then also like not even necessarily like black or brown America, but with just like the way that we're all kind of pitted mm -hmm. against or like contrasted in an incorrect way. And I think so mm -hmm. for me, in like the parts of the book that I was like, you know, you're just getting into sort of like the backstory of these characters and all of that. To me, the way he brought it home, I ended it and I was like, oh my God, I love this. Mm -hmm. I, I think what happened to me, I'm realizing, I realized a little bit yesterday, but realizing more now as we're talking, is a little bit what happened to me when I I got, well, okay. The, 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 basically what happened was uh, the first third of the book, or really, I mean, I guess kind of act one as structured in the book. Um, so first fifth of the book, I guess. Um, I I really was like, oh, I know who this guy is. Mm -hmm. in a way so i kind of like yada yada my way through like i definitely didn't read it very <laughs> carefully and it really if we can you know get into the book i i really like um got i i fell for the head fake of um the the narrator talking about how black and white was like you know we're the outsiders and like talking about black people and white people equally because that's yeah. a very like common mindset for a certain type of Asian. I mean, I, I, I would see, I, I say a certain type of Asian person, maybe that's being me being coy and pretending mm -hmm. I'm like better than them. But yeah. I think it's a lot of Asian people. And it's a lot of like Asian people in Hollywood's thing, which is like Hollywood is the one clear domain where like Asian-ness is a, it, it, it's not ambiguously like, we're, we're like, like very, low on the, the list of you know people you know things that are important to hollywood it's changing a little bit but like it's like so i i had my my like most like not receptive to this book mindset going in was i was like this is cherry picking like asian people's like civil rights issue basically like that's the thing it's like there are other things, but like sort of writ large, especially if you're on like Asian Twitter, you know, it's like, yes, yes, yes. Hollywood is fucked up. Representation is fucked up. We are not 
routinely being murdered in the street. So it feels churlish to be like, black people, white people got it made. It's like, well, no. And so, but so, and, and that is not the point of the book, but I fell yeah. so hard for that head fake in that right. um, moment that I really had trouble pulling myself out of, um, I even, oh, what did not write down the page number. But. We were texting about it and you were talking about like the black white equivalency thing. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I thought was, I, I was like the way that he did sort of head fake it and the way he brought it back. And like, I thought that because what it felt like was the experience that I think probably a very legitimate experience in line of thinking that I think a lot of Asian people in America have had, where it's just like, you're seeing the attention that black people get, like that's not good attention, but it's just like attention to like the shit that's happening for a lot of mm -hmm. reasons that's getting attention. And it feels unfair or it feels, it feels something. And like the realization of like, oh, my experience in America does not need to be in the context of a black experience. And what mm -hmm. I like, it felt like the sort of awakening of, mm -hmm thinking that I feel like I've seen with a lot of people I know. And I think that's probably happening mm -hmm. even a bit more now is like people of color in America are kind of like, maybe we should all like, this shit isn't going well for like anyone. <laughs> like maybe we could figure this out collectively. Right. I, so this goes back a little bit though, to the thing you said earlier about like the, the closed doors mixed company conversation, which is like, that was the part that I was like worried most about because I think like to white America, even that wrong um, revelation is sort of like, oh, oh, I hadn't thought about that's how Asian people feel. And I really, because it's like, there's a world where like all these white reviewers have read like a third of the book and like, got it. And yeah. like, um, so that was, I think the thing I was like, really, yeah, just like, like, gutting my way through. And that is a little bit why I think I did not give it as careful a read, especially in like yeah. the middle third of it. Cause I was just like, all right, I see where this is going. And then like the courtroom scene, I was like, oh fuck, okay. Well, I'm dumb, but I'm not gonna reread it right now. <laughs> That's basically what happened. I was like, I'm stupid, but I'll just have to bullshit my way through it. <laughs> well, I feel like he kind of hinted, the author Charles Yu, I feel like he hinted at this with like, you know, there was this moment when Willis, so like the generic Asian man was kind of working his way up briefly and like was at sort of like craft services. And there was a black woman who was like attractive cop, who was like this other sort of generic, you know, person. And I think like, you know, it'll be really interest, interesting to me in the coming years because I think this sort of comparison of the black female American experience and the Asian male experience, people are like starting to sort of like pay attention to it. Like, you know, you see an insecure where like you have this, this coupling of people. Like, I just, I, mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting to see more of that, but like that moment where they were both just like, we're going to toast to the thing that I'll like, let's do a show that's called black and yellow. And it's like, they'll never make that show. Um, mm -hmm. And I think those were the types of things that I was like, okay, he's getting at something else here mm -hmm. whether or not the character is you know like i think the idea that this character was still sort of try striving to be the like kung fu guy is like okay he's still trapped in this like limited sort of understanding of his experience in this country but those moments where i was like oh i feel like he's telling us that like he knows this thinking is kind of bullshit and like mm -hmm. i'm gonna get to it eventually yeah that's probably, again, I think that's like, that was right in the well of shit that I glossed over. Cause I was just like, I, 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 I just. Here, like I completely glossed over this book, but I'm well, talking about it. Well, no, I mean, or, sorry. I, I, I should say glossed over in the first read through. Cause yeah. I really, I really just like, I, yeah, again, I just like fell for it. it like, I, I think I was in the worst spot of having a little bit of knowledge like, yeah. I actually think I would have read the book better if it came in colder. Literally not as an Asian person with a lot of opinions about Asian people, especially in media. Like, I think I would have gotten the book better. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I, I whiffed so hard on the first two thirds of the book. It's comical. It's interesting because I feel like 
and, and this could just be like in terms of what I personally read, but I feel like uh, the literary world, like I feel like Asian writers have had a better go and success in that. Field. Like I think of a lot of like really popular books the last few years that I feel like, oh, this has been like a opportunity and moment in space for these stories more more so than Hollywood. So I think it's also interesting because like I know I know you because I have the same sort of thing when it's like a black thing that people are telling me is really, really good. And you're like <laughs> Right. You're like, okay, well there's kind of like a lot of writing on this. And like is it good? Like are white people being mm -hmm. honest about it? Because like I don't really care what white people think about black art all the time. Like mm -hmm. um, and but I, I do feel like for kind of this literary space, like it's, um, I don't know, it feels a little bit like it's been going better than Hollywood. Um, right. So that sort of concern of like, oh, this is the book, like this is the Asian novel of the year. I at least didn't feel quite as like, oh, everything's writing on like the success of mm -hmm. this book kind of thing. Well, yeah, and then there's even the the line between success. I mean, like like many things, I think my biggest fear was just like white audience plus that sort of like cuz 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 the thing is I've heard the the sort of like you, you know, the the way I phrase it, I phrase it in multiple text chains and like <laughs> even in a script I think, which is like it's the guy that thinks how come they can say uh, chink when I can't say the N word is profound. And I think yeah. there are a lot of those dudes out there. I like, you know, hang out with them in fucking LA <laughs> a lot. Um, so, so, and maybe, so maybe that's <laughs> like, there's <laughs> like, not like, hang out, there's not like good friends, but okay. it truly is like, like, it's, it's a more, it's, it's like the very first draft thing when you like are, are becoming like, Asian at all. It's yeah. like, I, I think that's like, or like, like becoming aware of like Asian people's place. And again, it is like, yeah, in terms of black people, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, I, to me, that, that viewpoint is very prevalent and therefore very scary because I'm like, again, the mixed company thing, it, that feels like it could be a book that wins a national book award. You know, I, I don't think yeah. it should, but I just feel like, you know, the white establishment could see that as eye-opening enough. Yeah. And so that's what I was just, like, really grateful for for the book, is that it fucking pushes past that in a way that, again, I don't know. I, like, I both describe myself as having too high expectations for Asian people and too low, so I'm not consistent <laughs> at all, but that's what I believe. I'm just yeah. like, ah, uh, we are... Well, like, you know, like the book gets to, it's like, yeah, we're yeah. fucking, like, diverse. And, like, the Asian experience is, like, that there isn't any, this shit is not real. Right. I mean, I, like, again, going back to that courtroom scene, like, those monologues I thought were really just incredibly well written. Like, this idea of, like, second class discrimination, I thought was, like, so interesting. But I also, what I really appreciated was like the historical context he put in the book. Like he's talking about, you know, like the Chinese Exclusion Act and the Bingham ordinance, you know, ordinances and the Geary Act. He's like talking about these things. And it's like, one, I knew about the Chinese Exclusion Act. Like I've, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. So like I knew about mm -hmm. the internment of Japanese Americans, which I always find to be a thing that like, it's crazy how little we talk about that, how they mm -hmm. literally like scooped up American citizens and fucking put them in. I'm like wild to me that that's not brought up as much as it should be. But I don't know. Like I'm wondering for you. Like were there were there some of these like historical references that he put in? Like how familiar were you with them? Oh, that's. Um, I feel like I came out of it exactly as familiar, which is like, there are a list of, it, it's always like a list of depressing bullet points yeah. that I've seen, but I mean, have a lot of trouble, you know, cause I'm, I'm like both, you know, I grew up like middle class in the Midwest. And so like, 
the 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 harshest type i'm very insulated from that type of racism i mean yeah. there's other racism but like i'm really insulated from like the the sort of like effects of the harshest like direct you know pre-model minority racism basically yeah so it's always been like a list that i'm like feel bad that i don't like emote more over i'm just yeah. like yeah but like yeah, I, I wonder. I mean, because, I mean, one of the reasons Japanese internment doesn't feel like an injustice is essentially, you know, model minority shit kicked in and became a type of reparations. Like, yeah. you know, it's not true, but it, like, feels that way, I think, yeah. to, like, an outsider. Like, it, it's like, yeah, 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 but, like, Japanese people are doing all right basically the reason why <laughs> yeah is you know the sense of that is why yeah. is why like i think like non-japanese americans feel like internment wasn't a prop you know it was like a an oopsie but it feels very historical because it has been on some level sort of rectified again but, it hasn't but no, right. it feels but like I think, it i think that goes back to something you said about everything so much of racism in America, and like most of it, is in the context and in contrast to like this original sin of slavery. And you're like, first of all, if we go back, like you fucking slaughtered and committed a genocide against all of these native people who were in this land, which like completely, like because it wasn't like, it, it feels before America. I think that's right. why it does not get folded into sort of like the way that we talk about the, because all of the sort of like tentpole racist laws most of them were like to screw over black people and like sort of the way they've all carried over. It's like, this was like, you know, something like redlining, which could impact a bunch of other people, but it's like, it was for black people. So it was like, you know, it's, so it becomes mm -hmm. like original sin thing, sin about it, but like being able to have conversations where it is not about, like, I think a problem that often happens in these conversations is people always compare shit to sleep. And it's like, it's like, you know, like, you know, like a, the Irish were slaves too. And you're like, or like, <laughs> you're like, listen, yes, that shit is not the same thing. It, and and when you bring it up, you are, they're, you're bringing it up in a context because you're comparing it to slavery in North America and the Caribbean, which was like a sort of uniquely horrific thing that happened. And it's like this ability to have we lose this like sense of sort of um, nuance and the ability to be like, okay, let's talk about being deported. Like your entire fucking, like you being, you know, living in the United States for 20 years of your 21 years on this planet and being deported. Let's just talk about that in the context that it exists in. It doesn't have to be, it's like, I don't know, is that worse than families being ripped apart when they were like, I don't like, I don't know mm -hmm. and there's no answer to that. So it's mm -hmm. like, that's just like, that's why I sort of liked the way he was laying out those things. Cause they were a lot of like immigration laws, like just keeping people from coming in, which I think is mm -hmm. like not, you can't find a black, like black racism that compares to that. Like they weren't, you know, like there wasn't like, don't mm -hmm. come here anymore kind of a thing. So it's like, great. Those are super different things. So let's just talk about them <laughs> separately and as they existed, as opposed to against the sort of background all the time against slavery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, it's, it feels like, I mean, two things. One is that like, I think for a significant number of people, slavery, I guess the Holocaust is like the alpha and omega of learning about suffering in the United States public yeah. school system. Um, and, and so like those, the, you know, it, it's like reasonable. Those are, those are, that's the only vocabulary we have to talk about this shit. Like, you know, and, and part of it is obviously like, we don't like to talk about immigration because like many of those things are happening today. And like, you know, we're, we're not past any of that shit. Like we're only kind of past slavery. I mean, we're not, <laughs> we're litigating the civil war today, but yeah. whatever, like, um yeah i i mean and it is like i guess it's just like one of those things where it's like you can say it a million times but like we always take the bait 
like people of color like we always can like fucking fight amongst each other like so easily um because i mean i part of it is because there's like no like great way to argue against that emotion because the thing is it's like that like hey black people have it easy in hollywood thing like i i'm positive i've had that gut reaction at yeah. points you know especially when it was like way outside of it i was like man you know that kind you know i'm sure not as horribly as it's been expressed yeah. by other people but like you know it's just like a gut reaction that you have yeah. and then the explanation for why that's incorrect it's just like it's like the balance of like it takes one second it takes a microsecond for you to have that feeling and it takes like fucking hours or a lifetime of thinking and reading to get yourself out of it and yeah. so like you will just never be able to fight that gut reaction that incorrect yeah. gut reaction um or you're constantly able to fight it you're constantly needing to fight it but it's just like an unending war um yeah. against people you know people who haven't thought about it it's it's the first yeah. draft it's like how are you gonna fight the first draft that everyone comes up with on their own yeah. um so yeah I don't know. I mean, I guess it is like, um, I don't know if I'm stepping on a potential talking point you already have written down, but it is like <laughs> moving from a more limited media to a more mass media, right. which is like putting the shit on TV maybe or something. Well, do you, do you think that this book like allowed for, um, the space for like, an Asian person maybe, or white people to recontextualize their, the way they look at like, not all of racism, but like specific, like this idea of like, oh, you res you may be part of you in somewhere resent black people because you feel like your suffering is suffering, but less than theirs, but you're experiencing your suffering. So like, like I wonder if it, mm -hmm. if it feels like, you know, or I think of, I always think of like, <clears throat> Gina Rodriguez, you know, a person who's just always out there <laughs> at every turn when a black person has something has to open her mouth about it. And I'm like, it's shitty because it's shitty and she should know better. But it's like, I get the urge of like, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with shit too. Um, but what I think like people often miss is like, it's not really black people's fault. It is like the, it is the gatekeeping, you know what I mean? Like that's the problem yeah. with you. It's like, yeah, you absolutely, like black people absolutely have gotten more of an opportunity in Hollywood, like in terms of representation. Like that's not like a, that's not like a controversial thing. Just like we have eyes, we can see, you know what I mean? Like we can see what's Yeah, happening. yeah. But you're like, that's not because black people are the yeah. heads of videos and said we're only letting these movies through and we're not letting any asian stories or latino stories that's not it's because white people yeah. are the gatekeepers who are allowing that because it is a type of racism that white america understands much more clearly you're like yeah they were yeah. slaves they had the dogs turned on them and that like that's so much easier to sort of explain than like you know immig like arcane immigration laws and like yeah the, way the model minority myth actually does hurt people it seems like a good thing it's like everyone thinks you're smart and it's like yeah but that fucks up people in different ways and it's just like yeah, the yeah. Thing is we're yelling at the wrong people like you're yelling yeah. you know when black panther came out and we're like where's the latino black it's like that wasn't black. The white marvel is run by white people that's what you should yeah, yeah 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 you can and it, it's like I, yeah i mean i think that's that's like just how the system works, right? You can be insidious because you're faceless and behind, you know, behind several layers of bureaucracy and business and like analytics or whatever. Yeah, it is like, like, it's always, always the white people's fault. <laughs> in twenty in 2021, in this case, shit can change, whatever. But, you know, for right now, it's like those, all those issues, especially that, you know, people of color have between each other, um, are are does by design i mean even like the la version of black and asian people it's like yeah because korean shop owners got pushed out of like the good part the white parts of town so yeah of course you know they are seen probably you know rightfully so as predatory to the black community but it's like yeah because they were not allowed to run businesses other places like it's it's just like we're always pointing pointing our fingers at each other in a way that i'm just like 
Um, what and so what I will say is, I wonder if though it's in the book, I think it is also possible to read the book in a different way because you mm -hmm. you kind of get like the knowledge sandwich, you know, in between to you know the sort of like ignorant point of view of the first act and then like a big action scene so mm -hmm. i i truly think there is a world where you can kind of blow by the courtroom monologues right. and just be, and come come out on the other side especially if you're like sort of like a um angry young asian man like <laughs> i i just i still just think you could take the wrong message from this or the opposite essentially opposite message um from well, this book there was a part where so the woman, um, I believe her name was like Officer Green, um, who Sarah Green, who was like the white, like the white detective. And they're mm -hmm. in the courtroom and she was like saying to Willis and she was like, you want to be treated like a white man. And then mm -hmm. his brother, his lawyer was like, well, no, he wants to be treated like an American. And I'm like, that's the same shit for all, yeah. of like for, for, for many white Americans, a white man is American because there's, mm -hmm. you know, white women, shit's going well for them too. But like, there's a lot of ways they can undercut mm -hmm. white women. There's like certainly, you know, and I think that's an interesting part of sort of like the racism against Asians in this country where like, it is, no one really tells me to go back to Africa. You know what I mean? Like when someone says that, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you're digging very deep into <laughs> like you're like you're going in like a very different direction because it's like you know i my family has my ancestors have been here longer than most white people <laughs> right, like, right 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 we were here pre you know ellis island and all that like we've been here um yeah but i thought i thought that like that idea of a a foreignness what i liked mm -hmm. was like sort of a uniquely, I would say Asian and, and Latino experience in this country where it's like, you are not an American, which is, is just a hard thing to push back against. Um, mm -hmm. or like, I haven't seen, you know, it's just, it's like, you're like, no, but I was born here. And they're like, yeah, but you're not from here. And it's like, well, I like, <laughs> we can fucking go in circles about this. Yeah. Oh, well, it's also like, oh, the, because I, it, it's so prevalent among not just white people that America, American, the American dream is like the white man's dream. Like, um, because that's, I would probably argue like every single member of my family probably, you know, certainly all the older generations, probably, I'm sure there's more problematic shit rattling in my brain than I like care to think about or acknowledge too often like it's just like yeah, yeah yeah that's like it's so hard to shake that that's what like success confidence perfection is that is actually one of the things that i was like struggling with the most too in the first act with the sort of kung fu guy mm -hmm. bruce lee thing because it's like bruce lee um to me represents this like represents i guess i should say represents doing it on his own terms more than probably even the reality of bruce lee is was <laughs> like you know very much at the mercy of an even more racist hollywood right um, so like how, how could he have done it on his own terms like um but it is like very funny because i'm like that is so far from like what i consider and i know my you know my asian experience is like also like not you know, this this sort of like Midwest, like educated parents, like view is not, you know, the majority at all. But it's, a, yeah. I think it's, significant, it's a significant part of Asian people and the Asian people stereotype, I think. Like that, like, oh yeah, you're, you're like, you know, you're economics professor out in wherever. Yeah. Like that's, that's the Asian person I know, or like the engineer that works at, you know, like my dad was an engineer, worked at Ford forever. And it's like, yeah. um, it was very, it was very funny because I was like, right, I don't recall ever being on the kung fu guy path, right. um, and so, and and again, that was another thing. But I was like, yes, that is a, a thing that maybe I'm, I'm the weird one here. Um, but again, you know, that was that was just me tripping over myself in the in the first third of the book. I did think the class, 
you know, sort mm -hmm. of her class was super interesting because I think, you know, it is, you're right. It's like, it's the first generation immigrants and, you know, and it's like, they, even if like maybe that, you know, they're running a convenience store or whatever it is. And like, but their child is going to be an engineer, they're going to be a doctor, they're going to be like whatever. And then it's going to be, they're going to be, you know, a respected person in America. And then like, that's a path to like sort of kind of whiteness, like one, mm -hmm. one of whiteness. Um, yeah. But I thought sh like this idea of like, you know, this apartment complex that they were living in, that was like people living like very close to poverty. And I think there was like a line in the book about like the difference between getting by and just barely getting by is like very wide. Um, mm -hmm. And I, like, it's, it's important to remember that like, most people are not engineers. Like, there's not enough engineers for like that. To, right, right, right. You know, like everyone to be there, but seeing just like a class, which I think like we mostly see it in, you know, obviously like the most obvious amateur is like Bong Joon Ho and Parasite and all of his films. All of his films are about class. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, because you're in a country where everyone, they're all like, you're in Korea and everyone's Korean. So it's easier to talk about this mm -hmm. class structure that in the United States, but I was like, I appreciate that they're showing, you know, we're seeing poor Asian people, um, mm -hmm. because like that's a group of people like in America, I'm like, we're never talking about these people. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's like the whole um, insidious part of, you know, the uh, like, like the Asian American, um, Asian American, honestly, just the phrase Asian American, like, like, as as demographics like Asian Americans, well, I I forgot where I, I had to look this up, not just heard, but I actually <laughs> looked up one time, um, which is that like Asian Americans comprise, you know, under under the umbrella of Asian Americans, there are some of the the poorest demographics. Like there are like Southeast Asian folks that are just like you know the poorest racial demographics as well as the richest racial demographics. Like we are like so wide. We also get, um, you know, because of the model minority myth, um, like East Asians, particularly like Chinese people. And I guess now like you know, with the rise of like Korea, it's like a pop culture center, like Korean people, maybe more so, um, but whatever, like it, we dominate that discussion. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the perception that that's what Asian Americans are. I mean, like the 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 scene in Crazy Rich Asians that really drove this home for me is like when they're scared of like the dark skinned guards. In, yeah, we in... saw that together. You remember that? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so. That was uh, certainly the last like f uh, screening. I think I went to. Oh um, but I don't go to a lot. I don't go to a lot of those. Um, but yeah, but I was like, oh, right, right, right. This is like crazy. Asians means more or less means Chinese. Right. Um, you know, and the way that like I grew up, like every Asian, you know, Chinese was like a brand name. It's like Coke or whatever. It's like, you're, you know, this is the Chinese dude. Like, right. um, and, and so... Yeah, I, I really appreciated that part. The the little diversion into like the grad school backstory for I believe the dad, where it's like that I was like, I feel like I, I wish there was like more of that in there. Um, but it it complicates the, the metaphor for like the, the right. early part. I, mean, I was looking for the line. Sorry, I, I wrote down a line somewhere. I can't find it, now. but but there, there's some mention essentially that like about one of the the backstory people, um, you know, make become gets a patent, becomes an engineer, and like that, you know, that was described as the rare path. Like you, this is how you got yourself out of Chinatown, and I was like, that's the part where I was like, it is the rare path, but it's not portrayed as the weird, rare path. I don't think. I don't know. That that was one that I was like, just like you know question well, marks and certain i think it kind of reminds me because i watched like a conversation i would love to a conversation that i should not participate in but i do <laughs> feel like i could listen in on would be a con like i watched um white tiger on netflix like this past week which is <laughs> you know it's a southeast asian story and um it's about it's a little slumdog millionaire which 
Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that because they're in India, but like, you know, it's about this poor kid who works his way up and like has to make difficult decisions and, you know, whatever to succeed. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I would love to hear this conversation, particularly as it pertain pertains to Hollywood. So I was like watching that movie and I saw like an interview with Priyanka Chopra and she was like, I hope to bring more of South Asian stories to the screen, which is also an interesting thing because like India has like a fully, like they don't need America. <laughs> right, right, right. Like you have a billion people in like very successful movies. So I'm sort of just like, this shit is the ghetto. Like stay, like you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to, you don't need to be famous here. Like you guys have your own <laughs> good shit going on. Um, but like, I'm like, when you watch, like if you were to watch White Tiger, like you don't feel like, an, or do you, do you, is it like a win for Asian people? Oh, right, right, right. Um, well, so I have not seen it yet. And yeah. I think that, yeah, I, I think that's like, I, I wonder, we're hitting up against that in pop culture a little bit, which is like, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that, like, especially, like, you know, Asia is just fucking huge. Like, Asian American, like, it only means something in the negative sense. Like, right. really. Or, no, that's not true. It, it has been, like, um, ho you know, it, there, there's a solidarity around it. But that's really because of, you know, the racism and the civil rights movement a little bit. But, like... The, really, Asian American just means anyone who could be called a chink, like credibly, because mm -hmm. it doesn't—it just doesn't mean anything else. Like yeah. in fucking Asia, we don't fuck with each other. We spend most of humanity trying to kill each other and enslave right. each other. So, like, it only matters because of America, right? Um, or you know, and and it only matters because of the subsequent pride that this group has built out of it. But like you know, it's still at its heart. Like that's that's what happened, right? It's just yeah. like the the only reason like I feel affinity with um, like Japanese folks, Japanese yeah. American, is because of what you know. It's really like a little bit rice and a little bit like just because we came we had similar experiences in america but like you know there isn't well, like the flip side of that i remember like a friend when i was growing up who was korean who like hated japanese people and i was like i don't really get it and then you were like yeah. oh, motherfuckers were like literally like they're lucky the nazis kept better records to be honest like, right Nazis kept really meticulous records, so it was very easy to be like, oh, look at like all this shit. Cause I'm like, they were out here like crazy shit. And my I was like, oh no wonder you hate Japan. I was like, yeah, yeah. like once I had that context, I was like, if you're Korean, no wonder you fucking hate this whole country. And so then the idea of like coming to America and it's like, it's all the same shit. It's like such yeah. a crazy yeah. flat name. Oh, my I mean, my grandpa went to his grave hating Japanese people and one of his most disappointments like that he ever expressed not even to me but about me was it like oh andrew kind of looks japanese it was just like and i was like okay that's weird and my cousin was like that's really bad <laughs> i was like oh you know i i didn't process it but yeah it was like you know a big deal but again it's like i grew up like like insulated from so much of the visceral stuff of this. So that's also why I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm fucking up, but like, or I'm overcompensating now that I'm like understanding things. Uh, I don't know. They, they, there's just like an interesting, like, yeah, the, the Asian-ness Asian isn't a thing or is a thing, but it's a very recent thing. Yeah. And like, yeah, and I, it's weird, too, because of the way pop culture and, like, money in particular is going to start to work. I think we're in, like, we we have existed in the small 50-ish year window where Asian and Asian American is a thing. And now where, like, the Asian countries are becoming their own, like, powerhouses, pop culture things, it is actually going to be less of a thing. You yeah. think fucking K-pop people fuck with Chinese people? Why would they? They shouldn't, you know? That's a, that's a good segue, because I want to talk about, like, the Hollywood of it all. To use a writer's room term, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Hollywood of it. Um, oh, my God. Oh, God. I know. Um, 
the Hollywood of it all in the book, but we, so just to start, cause like when we were texting about this book, I didn't, I didn't really realize this. I don't think until you had mentioned it to me, but the book has been obviously optioned. Um, mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be, I believe a TV show, like not, I don't yeah. think it's a movie. I think it's supposed to be a TV series for Hulu, which yeah. I mean, I have like just personally, and this is fully just like me. I have a real <laughs> about, I'm like, sometimes a book should just be a book like the mm -hmm. medium in which and not even just like a you know what i mean like any like to me there's something about trusting the medium that the artist chose and they're like there's a reason this is a poem and not a short story or there's is mm -hmm. a reason this is a short story and not a novel and not a book like it to like when you just are like make it a movie and it's like not everything should be a movie as we see constantly um and so <laughs> You know, I'm like, I actually, I have no, I'm like, I don't know what this looks like as a TV show. And like, for me, because I really enjoyed the book and I loved, like, I liked the format that it was written in and, you know, like the font that they're using and the way that he was stylistic and deliberate with the way he wrote his book. And so I'm like, it just feels like necessarily you're losing the mm -hmm. satire. Like the satire is that it is written like a script that you're reading, watching it you lose a lot of the satire to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I also think like, cause at the heart of it, I guess it, hopefully it is a big divergent adaptation that just sort of uses the idea, but it, it is also like, like as I've described many times, like even in my own reading of it, this is one story and all of the sub sub stories within it are sort of like building texture and, and argument and evidence towards an arc, but the arc is very simple and it is very slow. And there is a world where I'm like, Wah. as, as sort of written and look, I don't fucking know people, you know, obviously the other side of that is anyone can adapt anything in it has a oh, chance in this when they call you and you're in this writer's room and like four months <laughs> i am choosing my words as carefully as fucking possible this will live only as a live stream it'll be like a limited <laughs> no one will have seen us talk about the book no but but for real i i just like think like as as a tv show it sort of has the maximum opportunity for doing the worst version of it which is like <laughs> All these little, all these little wins, all these little stories, sub stories that are building on the fact that the narrator Willis is or is wrong. Like, but it's like you can't. Like, I mean, no, it's not that you can't. It's absolutely not that you can't. But I worry that the worst version of this is like building, building. It's a little bit like Mad Men, right? Like Mad Men, I think. Um, falls falls apart on the shallow read in a way that I think too many people that was their only read. Um, and and I would I would imagine like a straightforward adaptation of this would suffer a lot of the same things. It's like that's so funny that you said Mad Men because I recently rewatched Mad Men and like I mean, if I look back, like Mad Men was, cause I don't remember watching The Sopranos when I was like in high school, like when it was on, I watched it later. And so Mad Men was really the first like prestige television show I watched. And I was like blown away. Like, I mean, there's like a very direct line between like, you know, Shonda Rhimes and like Matt, where I was like, I did not realize TV could be this good. And when I watched it again, I was like, for real to me, like the, I could argue this versus The Sopranos as like the best TV show of all time to me. Like mm -hmm. I could, I feel like I could like fucking go to bat for Mad Men because I was like, it was so good when I rewatched it. But what I remembered before I rewatched it, I was always like, I watched all of Mad Men, you know, when I was like in college and when I was younger, and I don't remember anything that happened. Mm -hmm. like, I don't remember any of it because it wasn't like it's not like a flashy show like that. And I was right, like, right, I don't right. know anything that happened in the show. And then we watched and I was like, oh, this is amazing. But it's like if I was describing Mad Men or if I was like, make a Mad Men movie, it's like you literally couldn't because it is the slow burn of mm -hmm. that show and the the like the character moments. And it's like 
it just isn't it isn't possible. And so it's funny that you said yeah. Mad Men. I'm like, Mad Men should only be what it was. Yeah. I I mean I I go back and forth because I I I, yeah, I don't like. I don't know what a better way. I mean, this is like just sort of the eternal like when you're trying to actually say something as opposed to sort of just make entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, problem with TV, which is like, it's still. It. I feel like more than any other medium, it's simply released into the world, um, and it, it, it's it hits the basest part of the world because yeah. I'm just like. I'm just like, you know, for everyone who like like sees what happened in Mad Men, there's just like a bunch of like dudes who think they're smart who are like, I want to be Don Draper. And I'm just like right. is that and, and and sort of like right. Don Draper is like miserable and an alcoholic and like is a deeply troubled person. And the show does, if you, a, a service level viewing the show is like, Don Draper's cool. And it's like, Don Draper didn't even like Don Draper. Mm -hmm. Like, Don, like, like, the reason, it's like, if you wanted to get very little with it, it was like, oh, he literally, like, had a different identity because he, like, didn't like himself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, but it goes back to also, like, I feel like, make this book a TV show, but you, everyone has to have read the book first, which I know we right. can't. Yeah, well, right, like, right, right. We can't do that, but I'm like, it's the things of, and I think also what I think will be interesting to see is the way in which it does or doesn't fall prey to the very things it is critiquing in the book. So like the machine yeah. of Hollywood, where I mean, like I rail against this, like kind of privately because I don't, I'm not trying to like, you know fuck up my money um but uh, <laughs> like all the time with this industry and so the very things the book is critiquing like the fact that it is a black man who's like looks like an adonis you know what i mean like in the book where it was like oh yeah this wasn't like a nerdy black guy this was like a very mm -hmm. specific type of masculinity that we ascribe to black men and that's who gets to be like in these roles and on TV shows. And I'm like, the, all of the things that it's kind of trying to unpack, I'm like, I'm so scared that once it actually goes into Hollywood, it is just going to fall into the bullshit of Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's also like, it feels hard to imagine that this, that medium is the best way to tell this story. It's so like internal. There's so many like things that like so much backstory and like, yeah, I I look, I'm excited to see it, I suppose on some level, but I I'm just like I, I see like what I would imagine are pitfalls and like, you know, all all joking aside, I actually like, you know, I would love to work in any room, but I wouldn't particularly <laughs> like to work in this room because it feels like it would be very hard and like yeah. those would be very emotional days and like um, and just fucking fraught and difficult. Um, again, we'll do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, Cannot stress enough, but. That, it is the way that I both have experienced and also heard about rooms with black shows and in, in, in black projects where being given this opportunity and wanting to do something with it and not wanting to fall back on stereotypes or and, and wanting, and also not wanting to have to make art thinking about what white people are going to think, you know, like you just want to make something that's truthful and like, you know, it's why a show like Atlanta is so great. Cause it's like, clearly white people were not a consideration in this at all. Like there was like, no, it's like, I don't care. Or like, I think insecure kind of does that too, where it's just like, I don't really care if you understand what these two black women are talking about. Like you probably fucking figured out cause they're not speaking another language. Like it's, mm -hmm. um, but it is this like, it's just a fraughtness that I have to believe, and I have seen does not exist in white writers or, or white shows. Um, and I think it makes the work, it's more difficult. I think it's like, you feel like you have more pressure on you. I think it produces better things because of it, but it is, it's just like, when are we gonna be able to make TV shows where we're not just like, 
stress mm -hmm. about the racial politics or like Asian people being mad at you. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. where I'm like, oh, black people are going to be mad at us for mm -hmm, this. Never mm -hmm. mind white people. I, I think, I mean, to me, the example that came out of this year that I think, I think one of them said on a panel already, so I think I'm not blowing up anyone's spot or, or speaking outside the room, but like, you know, so I wrote on Mixed Dish this season and like part of our time in the writer's room was during like George Floyd uprisings and like, you know, just, you know, the, all the Black Lives Matter strife um, or, you know, the violence from the police yeah. over Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Um, and I, I feel like my bosses got asked a million times how how is you know how it was mixed it how is blackish how 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 are they gonna how how's gonna how this gonna get tackled and like you know I yeah so now I'm like trying to pick my words a little carefully but it's like no one no one is like what's the Goldbergs episode on this right. like <laughs> like you know like like the as close to analog show as humanly possible to mix it with just the race change. Yeah. It's like, no one, no one is like, and you know, they fucking should, it should be a thing that like, it's, you know, hopefully remaking society, but if not is our part of our society. And it's like, you know, the fact that like, yeah, that, that like is always there. And especially in like a writer's room where you're also like, and especially in comedy where you're like also batting around, I, I hope if you're a good person, like a little bit of residual guilt that's like, I mean, also we're just fucking around and being pretty well paid to, you know, even if it's a hard discussion, like, you know, we're not getting beat up right this second. Like it's not, I don't know. Well, it, it's, I, it's layers of guilt, I guess. I also feel like there's always like a catch, there's often a catch 22 when, <laughs> like when we make like important art, like I think of, you know, like for me, the thing that I always talk about with, with black films in particular and black sort of like Oscar worthy films is like, it's probably gonna be a slave story or it's probably gonna be mm -hmm. a civil rights story almost mm -hmm. every time. And Moonlight was an aberration. Like mm -hmm, it was, mm -hmm. you know, but like if you go back, someone or is or it's like precious it is like some profoundly mm -hmm. black deep suffering pain thing um mm -hmm. you know I think, like there was all of this sort of controversy and like i don't even know how it's been settled but with um is the minari is that how i say it am i saying mm -hmm, it right mm -hmm. where like yeah i don't know um i i've only I've, i haven't had discussions with people about it but you know it's like oh the film is mostly in korean so it should be a foreign language movie. And it's like, this movie is made by Americans. It's set in America. It's an American film. And it's, so mm -hmm. it's like, even when you get like the, so it's like one, you're like, oh my God, people are talking about it being nominated for an Oscar, which is like, not, you know, like an Asian American film. And like, for as much as I think like Fong is a genius and Parasite is amazing. You're like, that's not, it matters mm -hmm. the way that that's not an American movie. Um, and so it's like, okay, so you have this film of this like very sort of like interesting and nuanced and unseen Asian experience. And I'm like, well, they're speaking in Korean, so they can't fucking be an American. And it's like, mm -hmm. you can't, it's like, what do you want? You know, it's like you can't, mm -hmm. there's just no, it just always feels like even when you're making, when you're like, oh, we've mm -hmm. made something important and good and like is going to be a moment for like us and our community and our art or whatever, there's like still some bullshit tacked mm -hmm. along to it. You know, it's like Moonlight couldn't even win the Oscar. They couldn't even like have a normal experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie, like the first movie where there was like no white people in that movie. Mm -hmm. And like even Black Panther, they're like, we got one white guy here. It's like, there were no white people. And it's like, still couldn't just give us the Oscar. Like, normal, like, normal. like people get it like it's just always something i was thinking about is not i mean really remotely the same but it's sort of similar it's like how much of godfather 2 is in italian right there's no like <laughs> question like is this an american movie even though it is about like fucking immigrants avatar? like what the fuck language are they speaking in avatar <laughs> <laughs> uh that <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> yeah that, that's yeah i think i mean but right that that's the thing right it's like like asianness is still foreign yeah. um and that's like 
that's that's where we're at yeah in a probably selfishly good way because it's like i get to surprise people every time I, I walk into a meeting it's like oh this guy's a this guy's a dirt bag who's funny enough like you know <laughs> that's like that's that's a real eye opener for a lot of hollywood right now i'm like all right well i'll take it i guess <laughs> well we're just i don't know i don't even have any like closing thoughts i'm just like it's still cuz i you know i finished the book and i i really enjoyed it and i just i'm like it is i don't know maybe in a on a it was like getting at things that i think we experience mm-hmm very real way, like entertainment Mm -hmm. Hollywood and like being pitted against each other and representation. And it's like, is it good to just have a, just have 12 years of slave because it just means black actors were employed and win awards and like can segue that into asking for more money and doing their own projects. And is is it like, does this all, do you just sort of Mm -hmm. like take it, but it's, it's increasingly like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that's the yeah. like, I don't know if that's the way we should be doing this. Well, I mean, I think it is like 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 all of Hollywood, you're just like selling pieces of your soul and your integrity in exchange for getting to say, you know, what you are. It's just that for people of color, that integrity is a higher cost. Like yeah. we can we'll fucking, you know, and, and I've you we've both seen it in both our communities too. Like you've seen people give away all their integrity and you're like, they still might be right. I don't fucking know. Like, you know, I, I'm certainly, you know, not saying that, you know, not like my path specifically, but like the, like hanging on to a piece of that is like the better way to go. I think that's like a constant debate. Um, yeah, I don't have anything. I did want to show off my, my shirt yeah, cause yeah. I got a, very um i think problematic i'm not gonna look this up but this is um <laughs> this is uh, a comic a comic book character uh called uh lao fuzi that is it's like 70s and it's basically like andy cap like this three panel very very unfunny very i mean he's basically it's, it's like marmaduke and that his only plots are like i'm trying to eat more dumplings or i'm trying to look or trying to like get with the hot lady probably assault a hot lady again it was the 70s and so please 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 don't think that i'm like actually like a fan fan but it's also very like uh to me one type of taiwanese american chinese american kid is like you go to grandma's and there's a stack of these like comics and you just like um it's like the chinese is basic enough that you can like pick out at least nouns and verbs and like like kind of basically get what's happening so, but yeah, this oh, is man. like very, very Asian, <laughs> but also like the most specific shit, which is I think very appropriate for this book. It is. I'm into it. Interior yep. training. Also, guys, it's about to be February. We're about to go into what I'm sure will be the wildest Black History Month we've had in a while. <laughs> like, no one is well. White people are still figuring it out from this spring. I'm hoping it doesn't go the way of Juneteenth where like my nail salon <laughs> is emailing me about fucking Juneteenth, like a holiday they heard of two years ago. I would just, I would, it, please everyone just tighten up. Um, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna have a book for you. Just read things. You don't need to do anything for Black History Month. You know what I mean? If you're just, <laughs> go read, you know, The One of Other Sons, go read the autobiography of Malcolm X, read the Manny Marable biography, or, Ma- oh my God, I'm, Anyway, the biography of Malcolm X. Um, just uh, don't, you know, post crazy shit. And also, my friend Clover wrote a book that's coming out on February 2nd um, called The Mother Load. It's about black, it's not just black, it's about female rappers and hip hop, a um, uh, hundred plus women who made hip hop. It's got like very cool, you know, it, drawings and like all the illustrations and um, it's a black woman. You can give her money. Do that this Black History Month. So, <laughs> posting some weird shit, you know. Also, if if you're gonna do the dumb shit of like I Venmoed my black friend, whatever number you had in mind, five x it at least yeah. because whatever yeah. whatever number you thought was appropriate, it was insultingly low. 
Just, you know, just I'm just going to tell people right now. Book and call it a day, okay? That's that's what we need. Um, <laughs> Andrew, you're wonderful. Oh, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It was lovely. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>